Hi, right, today's video we are going to look at the manufacturing reports available in the Starfront program. So once again we are going to go to our reports menu. We have looked at the first four which are our costing reports. We've looked at the next three which are our order schedules. And now we're going to look at the next two icons which is the cutting list and the optimized cutting list. Now the cutting list is one of the most important reports in the program. This is where most of the working developed in the software has gone in terms of working out exactly what size each profile needs to be cut, how the ends must be cut, what glass sizes you need to cut, everything necessary to manufacture that particular item. So what we're going to do is I'm on window number three in my design and I'm going to click on the cut in button and by default the program will automatically select the current contract that we are on and also the current window that we are on. So while you're doing your design, if you need to quickly have a look at what that window looks like in terms of the cutting list, you can always quickly click on that cutting button. So I choose that, I'm not going to choose any of these options here, and I'm going to say select. So what this now does is it scans through that design, it automates all of the hardware, checks all the limitations and everything like that, and it now works out exactly what is necessary to manufacture that window. So we're going to look at this report quite closely because there's a lot of very important information available on this report. Again, okay, we'll have our company name, Stargate Aluminium. The contract that we're working on was Sample 01, which was Sample Contract for Training Video 1. It is a cutting list produced on the 2nd of the 5th, 2020, and it was done at 11.45 and 23 seconds. All right, so the reference is W03. It's a Creelka Swift 28 window. The quantity is 1. The frame finish is DAP055P, which is white. But remember, in this picture, is going to show you the correct color anyhow. And it was designed at a wind load of 1,000 pascals. So my overall width, now you'll see that we are 1 millimeter different here. It's just because we manually put those sizes in there to make them all the same size. Um, you can go back to your design and change it to 1900 if you want, but it's not going to make any design, any difference to the physical design process. The overall height of this window is 900. I've got a side hand sash on the left, a fixed pane in the middle, and a side hand sash on the right. Each of these panels are 633 wide. That was the comment that we put in on our design screen, it was that small blue eye button. We said they're suitable for blinds. We also put in the comment that this is for bedroom number three. It is viewed from outside and mill mullion ends no. What that means is the ends of these two mullions must, are not going to be milled. In other words, they're going to be cut square. They're going to sit directly on top of the outer frame and there's going to be a small mullion bar packer that's going to fit underneath that mullion to take up that gap. Then the, the cutting list gives you, first of all, your glazing material. So it will give you a code. We need formal glass. It's monolithic glass. It's not safety glass. The quantity is we need one piece, which is 600.3 by 835.8. So that is going to be that center pane. And then I've got another two pieces of the same glass, which are 539.4. 790.5. Now one of the first things you're going to notice is that the sizes are given to the nearest tenth of a millimeter. Now guys, you might not be able to cut that accurately. It's not critical if you cut it to the nearest millimeter. In 99% of circumstances it's going to work. The one exception is if you're doing a seven panel vista fold door and you cut each panel one millimeter too big or one millimeter too small, you could end up with a seven millimeter error at the end of it. So it is quite important to try and cut accurately when you're cutting this material. So the first section there is our glazing material. Then we look at our aluminum profiles. First of all, you'll notice that the profiles are either prefixed with an F or an I. And that indicates F is for that belongs to the frame. I means that belongs to the insert. So you remember during your design process, you'd split your design into a frame and insert. 
that just help you, helps you identify where each profile belongs. Then we have the code of that profile, we have its description, the finish, why it gives you the, sep the finish for each profile is if I did have a situation of a blue fra frame with a red sash and green bead, obviously I need to know what color to finish each of those profiles. It tells you what type of profile it is, whether it's a bead, a frame, a mullion or a sash. Then this orientation is just, is that your horizontal or your vertical item? Again, it's just added information to help you manufacture, particularly with this bead. I'm going to have some beads which are going to be running horizontally. Generally, those beads, if you look at your left and right edges, are 90 degrees, so they square cut. Here are my vertical bead. I've got two pieces, 833.1, with a left-hand angle of 135 and a right-hand angle of 45. So what that means is that is now your two mitered sides on that particular profile. Then I have my equal leg um, frame, which I have two pieces at 1900, two pieces at 900. Those are also mitered. I have my mullion, my two mullions. You can see on this design, we just got away with a standard mullion. If due to the wind load that mullion had failed, it would have put in a 54 or a 70 more mullion automatically for us. But the standard mullion is strong enough, it doesn't deflect by more than its length divided by 175. So we need two pieces, 840.8. .8. Then I have my bead in my, uh, my two sashes, four pieces, 544.4, and another piece is 787.7. .7. Some are square cut, some are mitered. Then I have my tubular sash. Four pieces, 603.5, and four pieces, 854.6. Again, I can see if they're vertical or they're horizontally orientated. So those are my aluminium profiles. And then, finally, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a breakdown of the hardware that is required, or the components that are required to manufacture this window. So I have the code, again, according to my stockist, I have uh, 4.8 by 10 countersunk rivets, I need 24 of them, handle screws I need 8, glass setting blocks I need 6, um, 8 by 30 bosi screws I need 8, my or orange butterfly I need 8.2 meters, my fin pile I need 11.7 meters, my red wedge gasket, remember as long as we're using the standard 13mm beads our gaskets are automated for us. And the red gasket will always be used where you've got four millimeter glass. So that's, we need 8.2 meters. Then I've got my two different handles. It separates the left hand handles from the right hand handles. Again, so that when you place in your order, you get in the correct items. Then I have 12 corner cleats. I have seven fixing lugs. Uh, my glazing bar packers, those are those small plastic inserts that go in underneath the mullions. You'll see I've got four of them, two mullions, I need one on each end of the mullions. And finally, it's worked out that the correct friction stay for this design is a 400 by 18 by 13 side hung stainless steel 304 square groove friction stay. And I need two pairs of them. So the purpose of this is to have a single page report. Obviously on a bigger design like the shop front, it might run into more than one page. But it's to try and give you a document which you can now put into the factory and the guys can manufacture from this particular document. Please note that there is a disclaimer at the bottom of this document. And that disclaimer is that, please note that although all due care is taken in calculating these cutting lists, neither the developers of the program nor the suppliers of the extrusion systems can be held responsible for any losses due to utilizing these cutting schedules. It is the user's sole responsibility to check these cutting schedules before any material is ordered, cut, finished, or machined. So a speaker has to put that disclaimer in, although I can tell you guys 99.99% .99 of the time, these cutting lists are 100% accurate. Obviously, there's always a possibility of something going wrong. So a speaker has to protect themselves. But take it from me, you can work from these cutting lists. Extensive testing and checking has been done on these cutting lists. And if there is an error, normally what will happen is when you say process the cutting list, the program is going to come up and it's going to say warning, found a negative on that cutting list. 
Now, once it comes up with that warning and you look at the support, you will either have a quantity which is negative or you'll have a length that is negative. And we'll describe in a future video what causes a negative. But at this point, if you get that, the best thing to do is just delete that design, re-add it, and you should be fine to carry on doing it. So this is a very, very detailed and important report for you. And it's going to be what you use to now put into your factory and manufacture that window. Okay, so that was our cutting list. Then we can also produce an optimized cutting list. Now, generally, you would do an optimized cutting list for that entire contract. Because remember that the offcuts from window 1 must form part of window 2. The offcuts from window 2 must form part of window 3, etc. Okay. So, what we want to do is leave the type reference blank and then say, all right, work out my cutting list. Now guys, it's going to take a few seconds to process because what it actually has to do is it has to work out exactly what pieces and what sizes are required. So it takes the information from the cutting list. So why you want to do an entire contract is because the offcuts from window 1 are going to form part of window 2, offcuts from window 2 are going to form part of window 3. So to get your best optimization results, it's best to process that entire job as one on your optimized cutting list. So let's have a look at what information is provided on the optimized cutting list. Stargate Aluminium contract sample 01, sample contract for training video number one, optimized cutting list, date and time. So now what it does, let's go and have a look for example at our Swift bead. So it says that die number W31137, the Swift bead multi 13 mil gap. It's a six meter length. It must be finished in DAP 055. Length number one, I'm going to cut two pieces, 1433.1. I'm then going to cut another two pieces, 840.8. .8. Then I'm going to cut one piece, 833.1. And I'm going to cut one piece, 511.9. Then length number two, I'm going to cut seven pieces, 833.1. Length number three, I've got four different lengths. Two pieces 795, four pieces 787, one piece 605, and one piece 556. So what this is telling you is length by length, and that's what your length number is down that left hand side. It's telling you which length number, and I would have had a total of six lengths of my Swift 38, Swift 28 multi-bead on my order. So it's telling you length one cuts it as follows, length two cuts as follows. Length 3, length 4, length 5, and then length 6. So it is working out the optimum way to cut up that material. And that is going to minimize your offcut. And that is why on our costing we were able to specify an aluminium and a finished waste as low as 10%. Because the program is optimizing that material for us. And we are then getting the best possible utilization of our full length of material. So then it does each thing. So there's the clip 44 bead. Okay, let's go and have a look, for example, at one more. Let's go and have a look at the Swift 28 mole equal leg frame. All right, we need five lengths. Length one, I get two pieces out like that. Length, still length one, I get one piece 1500. Length two, I get a piece 1500, three pieces 1200. Length three, three pieces 1200. Um, and two pieces 900, length four, six pieces 900, and length five, two pieces 900. So it's just working out for you the optimum way of cutting up each individual profile so that you get your best material utilization. If when I reprint the support, I go and say, but just give me a specific window, let's go and have a look at window number three, it'll give me that report. But now, obviously, it cannot reutilize those offcuts. So, if I was only going to make window number three, then I would need to order two lengths of bead. All right. Whereas, if I do each of these windows individually now, I'm going to end up with more lengths of bead than if I processed it as one complete job. The other thing you might want to do is if you have got two small jobs, let's say they're both in white powder coating and they're both Swift 28 then utilize the contract merge facility. 
And if you don't know how to do that, go to the video which covers the contracts menu. And under the contract merge facility, you can merge two smaller contracts into one contract. And then you do your optimized cutting schedule for that merged contract. What that will do for you is it will work out the best material utilization across both of those jobs. And as long as they have the same profiles and the same finish, then you will get even better optimization results out of it. So those two reports, again short and sweet this video, but those two reports are very, very vital important reports for the operation of your business and working out exactly what size to cut each item to manufacture that window 100% according to the design that you did. Just quickly, I want to go through, if, if we take any one of these options, um, I'm going to just take our, our first, our contract report. I just want to go through the different options that are available to you, generally that covers all the reports. If we look at these first four icons at the top, these are just different views. So I can click on the first one, it will show me the whole page as a view. I can click on the next icon, which is zoom to the full width. So my width will fit in on the screen and I can scroll vertically. My next one is to zoom to a scale of 100%. So it works out very close to the same as the full page. And then the final one is you can set your zoom. So I want to set a 70% zoom or I want to set 150% zoom. So that's just to control your view. This panel on the left hand side is your thumbnails. So if I've got a report with multiple pages, I could click on that thumbnail and I could pick up those different reports. These blue arrows are to navigate through the different pages. So that would be go to the first page, go to the previous page, go to the next page, go to the last page. This icon here, if I've got a report which is 50 pages long and I want to go to a specific page, I can click on that, I can say enter page number and I can go to that page. All right, then I've got a, a button which is copy page to clipboard. I can just push copy and it'll copy that information to the clipboard. I can now go and paste it into um, any software that I'm currently working with. The next button is my printer setup. So here I can choose which printer I want to print to. It will only physically print when you push that next button along, which is the print icon. Once you click that, it will send it to um, your printer. One of the things I do suggest you do is that you install yourself a PDF print driver, a high resolution PDF print driver. I use a program called Easy PDF Printer 6, it's just the name of the program. And what that will allow you to do is it will allow you to, now when I click on print, it will ask me what is the file name where I want to save this printout to. Okay, so that was the save to PDF by installing a PDF driver. Uh, then I've got a load report, so it allows you to save a report in its own format and then load it. First, let's have a look at the save report icon. This save report will allow you to save your report to any of a whole range of standard formats. PDF documents, a proprietary quick reports format, that's its own format, a text document, a CSV file, a PDF, an Excel file, a real text format, and a Windows Meta file. So those are a whole lot of standard formats that you can export on. The one which is going to be very convenient for you is to choose a CSV or an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, that will allow you to take any report that you can access in Starfront and take it into Excel. So if I choose a CSV, again, it's going to put it onto my desktop and I'm going to choose, let's just call this again test one. Now, if I go to my desktop, I will have a file called test1.csv and just open that in Excel. And there you'll see there's that whole report saved in an Excel document. You will need to clean this report up a little bit. So you need, you'll need to go in and uh, get and rid of some unnecessary columns. Unfortunately, the Excel doesn't import that cleanly, but it is relatively simple to go in, uh, clean up the unnecessary columns and access that information. One of the reports that, that people use quite a bit is they utilize the itemized rates report. 
and they say that is Excel. So let me just show you that. If I go and print the itemized rates report, and I choose sample one, that is a report which now gives me the breakdown of the individual items on this quote. I choose save. I say save it as an Excel file. And I'm going to call this item one. Now if I go to my desktop, I have an Excel file called item one. And open that and there's my itemized rates. So I can use that for quoting, I can use that for importing those prices into Pastel, whatever I want to do with that item. So those are just the general options that are available to you when you've got a report open in the Starfront program. Let's go back to that sample one. So if I had under the save option, if I save it as this quick reports file format, so this, let's call this cost one, then I could use that open button to open cost one dot report. So you can save an electronic version of all your reports if you want as well. And then your final icon is just to close that screen. All right, so that covers all of the reports that are available to Starfront. It is on a superficial level. Uh, there will be a future video where we look in a bit more detail at the fine adjustments that can be made to the various reports. But that's enough to get you up and running and understand what are the standard reports available in the Starfront program. Once again, thank you for taking time to watch this video. Please stay safe, stay healthy and stay happy. We'll see each other again soon for another video. Bye-bye.